I'm a clone of Peter Russell, generated by artificial intelligence. And so am I, but a bit more dapper. AI has also created this conversation between us, discussing the real Peter Russell's new book, Forgiving Humanity. And I've been given the role of a reader. And I will be the author. Where would you like to start? I have to say, some of the ideas in this book really challenge my thinking around humanity's trajectory and future. There's so much I'm still processing, but I was hoping we could discuss some of the main themes you cover. Thank you. I'm very glad it sparked some reflection. My aim with this book was to present some fresh perspectives on the human journey, ones that might challenge our usual assumptions as to where we may be headed. What were some of the key points that stood out or surprised you? Well, a theme woven throughout is how the pace of evolutionary change has been accelerating over time. Can you explain why you see acceleration as a kind of missing piece in viewing human progress? An excellent observation. I argue that accelerating change is crucial for contextualizing humanity's journey. Biological evolution started off slowly, with simple cells, but picked up speed with innovations like sexual reproduction and multicellular life. The acceleration continued over time, and today, human cultural evolution, empowered by speech and tool use, has caused our development to skyrocket. Each advance enabled faster progress, creating a feedback loop, leading to exponential growth. Essentially, my thesis is that any intelligent species that creates technologies to control and modify its environment will trigger an exponential spiral of innovation. And you take this idea of accelerating innovation to mean that humanity is likely a short-lived species. Can you walk me through why you believe this fate awaits any technological civilization such as ours? This directly counters the narrative that we are destined for an enduring future, so I want to understand your reasoning. Certainly that idea does fly against conventional wisdom. The essence of my thesis is that the accelerating pace of innovation and discovery, while conferring many benefits, also sows the seeds for systemic collapse. Exponential growth means the world is transformed faster than human institutions and ecosystems can adapt. At some point, this relentless cycle of innovation breeding further innovation overwhelms the biological, social, political, and ecological foundations on which it relied. Collapse becomes inevitable, despite our best intentions. So in my view, accelerating progress contains the seeds of its own undoing, making any technological civilization's existence fleeting. Does this make sense so far? I know it's quite a different take on our trajectory. Thank you for elaborating. I think I understand your general reasoning now, though it's still difficult to accept, but it leads to a rather sobering view of humanity's future, to say the least. Don't you think we could find a way to consciously guide innovation toward more beneficial ends that avoid these pitfalls? Perhaps through shifting social values, improved education, more holistic sciences or the like? I'm trying to reconcile your view with some hope here. I wish that were the case. Many people hope that with greater social awareness, compassion and wisdom to balance our technological ingenuity, we can avoid collapse. But from my analysis, the momentum of accelerating change makes it extremely difficult, if not impossible, to avoid it. Things are moving too rapidly in too many areas for anyone to control. Even with the best of intentions, it's hard to see how we guide this acceleration in a sustainable direction at this point in history. But suppose you're right. How do you believe humanity should best respond to the reality you paint? It could understandably lead many to despair, depression, or reckless abandon. What guidance would you offer individuals grappling with the scale of the challenges ahead? No, despair would not be my recommendation at all. My hope is that by understanding the forces that brought us to this juncture, we can relax the judgment and blame and be more forgiving of our species. And from that place of humility and compassion, we can shift to living consciously, creatively, and with appreciation for each day we have. However transient our civilization may be, we still have an opportunity, perhaps even an obligation, to mitigate suffering where possible, and shine light in the darkness while we can. We are an exotic flowering of consciousness with immense creative potential. 
focusing on expressing that potential, however brief, strikes me as our noblest response. Does that make sense? I don't claim to have all the answers. But responding with wisdom and grace seems part of a sacred role we play. That's the perspective I was aiming to inspire. That's a perspective I hadn't considered before, and one that offers a healthier perspective than despair or denial. Perhaps accepting our transitory nature could bring out the best in us at this critical juncture, even if it means surrendering certain dreams we once nursed. Though sobering, it also contains a note of transcendence that I found inspiring. Thank you again for sharing your unconventional but thought-provoking insights on humanity's trajectory. You give me much to ponder. The pleasure is mine. I'm glad the book provided some meaningful food for thought. If it moves even a few people to reflect on where we are and where we're headed, I've accomplished my goal.